de ba ye kene de mono asim ka nko ye chiri ya zelo asim mono tutu oma e ife oma mbo de oma stane ebi si wene sere enu bo sin keta na eastern is 24 ay sinon ya dero nyobu na na mma kada bundi ne sere eni nwa kupo ni ya ide ebe di chiche enu bo sin keta isi na nwa ya dera ni ibo na mma na ya ri ke echi na echi ya da gwa gwa Um, if I na boya bifa wo teru no bosin ka ta bifa na we bo morning tea ni dwa kwo e ya bo basta maka ya biye ne me na obuda ino ni mia ana basta maka ngolo wendi bona zo e di ko si de o woli e ah bia flam prime minister ku ni dwa kwo ngwe teru no kun ge ya bifa kun ge se ya bifa na ti ya lo nko ni funu chedo basta maka ye nda ni me o huga si ni dwa kwo di chiche no bosin ka ta na morning tea Um, the key in a gear beef, drop what are your own comment in it? What for other one? All right, over to you, sir. And uh, with this uh, development, uh, in the in the next uh, cabinet meeting, uh, this will be properly uh, briefed. So, but for now, you know that uh, we have special envoy, yes. uh, you know, of, of the Biafra government in exile and the Wong and uh, Ambassador uh, Iwunze, you know, together will be pushing this particular Biafra awareness uh, within the Pacific uh, uh, region and, of course, uh, in Australia and, of course, in some of the Asian uh, uh, countries. So, uh, Wong, thank you very much. I didn't know that uh, you are going to. Everything, yes. the energy, money, and uh, wow. and also yeah. Bia France. Uh, Wong is also a charge of uh, the Biafra government uh, international trade, promoting international trade. Uh, at this point, so we, we we there are a lot of things going on that uh, uh, you know uh, people don't know yet. But as we move on, uh, it will be coming to the public. So he is in charge of the Asia Pacific of the Biafra government uh, international trade uh, and he has uh, the right to solicit uh, for that investors and all that for Biafra government. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Prime Minister. We support you. you. Don't worry. Fully support. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. B thank you, Monk. Thank you. Thanks, William. Mazuluk, please um, go ahead. Hey, honorable Mazajare, good afternoon, my brother. And good afternoon, Ambassador Luke Wunze. I'm using this opportunity uh, to tell my able Prime Minister, Iyeri Oba, that yes, when we be Australia, that's a man as Australia. Uh, I was talking to him about the program that we have done with the engine 50, a gemma, where na our Prime Minister Moji, they won. Udo, from Germany, we send the receipt to Honorable Adiere. Thank you. You go come from the come from Africa. BMO, BMO of Biafra. BMO of Biafra. Okay, BMO one the dollar. Thank you, sir. I'm going to be in the world. 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 BMO. Thank you. Thank you, BMO. Thank you. Anybody with any question, anything to say or ask a PM, this is your moment, this is your time. You yeah, can do that now. Yeah, I got a question for PM. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, uh, everyone that's here. Sorry. Okay, the question, I want two questions for the uh, for the Prime Minister. Um, I will just take it one after the other. And uh, as usual, I will be posting 50 agenda on each question actually we were one after the other so i don't i think the prime minister is there listening so prime minister a yeah. uh, few weeks a uh, few weeks ago or maybe a month something like that i can't remember vividly 
uh, in a surprise move that shocked some dear friends, people, and even international observers monitoring our liberation. Your office extended invitations to Nigeria Foreign Affairs Minister Yusuf Tuga and Director of Defense and Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba. And even recently, you also extended that invitation to those slave enablers within our land to the upcoming Biafra Restoration Convention in Finland starting from the 29th of November to the 3rd of December 2024, after their failed move to extradite you through the European Union and um, those shenanigans, the ones posting uh, bounties on your head and those sending suicide bombers. So my question is this, what was the reason for the invitation of these terrorist Nigeria officials and their slave enablers from Biafra land? Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you very Please, much, uh, um, okay. Rafael. Let me answer this first before then you can make an announcement. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, uh, question. Actually, I was about joining another uh, another thing before uh, that question came and I decided to sit back because it's an important one. So the reason is that I'm a state man and uh, this freedom of Biafra is beyond uh, anger and hatred of our oppressors. We are aspiring to becoming one of the best country in the world, and we are going to be leading by example. So irrespective of what they have done to us, irrespective of how we hate them, we give them the opportunity to also come and uh, ask questions to know so that we are going to tell them what nobody has ever done or what nobody has ever told them in their face so it's an opportunity for them to come and uh, get delivered and of course because we are fighting to become an independent state doesn't mean that everybody who have wronged us will continue to be our enemy we are going to have bilateral agreement with these people, no matter how bad it sound. We are not going to be an islander in that Sahel region. We must understand that as a state man, we have to lead by example and not by malice, hatred for what they have done to us. At the same time, we will make sure that those who have wronged us who will have a special place in our heart where we will keep how to revenge if there is any word revenge or if there's going to be any word revenge in our own book but for now we will extend our uh, invitation to everybody including britain if they want to come we will extend they are not the enemies we are fighting is those who have subjugated us to this state where we are today, where we are now fighting for our survival. So let them come and listen to the reason we are doing what we are doing. Because they could not provide an enabling environment for us to do this in our homeland. Our homeland have been occupied. And that's why we are doing what we're doing today in exile. So they can come here and get delivered. And of course, it is also in accordance with international law because everything we do today is in accordance with international law so that nobody will say we did not invite them. We are inviting them. And so they can come and witness. Uh, they don't need to accept what we are doing. You know, we are not telling them to come. That they are coming means that they accepted what we are doing or they are coming means that the approval of the Biafra declaration or the or the self-referendum. No, it doesn't mean that it is an express approval from them. They can even come there and uh, give a speech to counter what we're doing. We'll give them the opportunity because we want to show them how to practice a democracy. So they can come. If uh, they have a better argument to give to the world that will be listening from all over the world and watching, because many dignitaries will come to this convention while those who will not make it will follow the convention through the zoom so if they if they believe they have more sensible argument upstairs 
to counter what we are doing and the more superior uh, argument that is going to be more reasonable than what, what we are doing, then they should come. We'll give them the platform. That is democracy. But I know they cannot do that. Even when we are inviting them, they will be feeling so big. But that invitation has been recorded that, yes, Biafra government extended their invitation to Nigeria government and those who are who and those enablers who have subjugated us to this particular inhuman treatment for many decades without looking back. So that is the reason. And there are many reasons that I can continue to explain and explain and explain, but these are the major reasons to show and demonstrate that Biafra is bringing a true democracy to Africa. And we are not going to be leading our people with vengeance, malice, hatred for what they have done in the past. We will follow our new laws and new norms in accordance with international law and the most acceptable policies all over the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. That shows what the prayer is bringing to the table. Thank you so much for that. And the, my second question goes like this. Uh, this question is in regards to the just concluded 30 days shutdown of Nigerian institutions within affected uh, states in Biafra territories and the current one that is the 60 day that's coming or so. Prime Minister, it is unusual and surprising that none of these so-called state actors, especially the so-called politicians in the Southeast, have publicly made any political statement regarding or condemning the shutdown of Nigerian institutions within, uh, within Biafra territory, either directly or even attacking you in the process. The reason why I'm asking this question is that these are the same people that have been fighting your government from day one during the time of implementation of the sit at home. But all of a sudden, these people have never made any single comment. So the question is, have they finally, have it finally down on them that Biafra is here and they cannot be able to thwart the coming of Biafra? What is the silent all about? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You have answered the question. For how long will they continue to make noise? That is the point. And you know that they have come to realize that each time they make noise, they get themselves exposed. You know, each time they make noise about it, that's when the media, their own media, not our own media, their own media will focus on them to expose their lies. Because you know that Nigeria media has summoned courage now to be reporting what is happening within the Biafra struggle. So uh, we have delegitimized them. They have no right. They are defunct. The only right, the only thing they, that make them relevant is that they have terrorists in uniform, police uniform and military uniform, and they have guns to kill at will. That's the only thing that is making them relevant. Apart from that, nobody is taking them, nobody is loyal to them in the entire region. And you can agree with me. The only people that are loyal to them are those who they get money from, who they who they give money to, and who you know make a living from them. And they are very few. They are just 0.000 something percent of our population. So why would they continue to talk when it is very clear that the Biafra government is in charge of the Biafra land, including their number two or number three? I don't know which their their hierarchy. The uh, Senate president may you know said it. So. It is any time, and that's why most of them will not talk again, even at the National Assembly, because it is a shame. Once they open mouth to talk, they expose themselves, you know? So they are not going to, and our two months, 60 days lockdown of the Nigerian institution is coming. You know, you know, we work in accordance with, you know, our template. So once the time is, is right, we hit it. And when we hit it, we don't want that uh, it will somehow distract uh, our plan for the uh, convention. So, and if, as you can see that the convention is already fast approaching. So we don't want to put that heat, you know, at the same time, uh, we will look for the appropriate time. Uh, we have much time. We still, after the December 2nd, the 60 days can even come after that. So, because that is when the delegitimization and the struggle for the uh, recognition of Biafra will take uh, this, the next second, the next phase. This is a struggle for freedom that need to be planned very well with people that are committed and people that know what they are doing. It's not a, it's not a struggle for a resource control or, or a struggle for political pressure, a political pressure group or struggle. No, this is a struggle for independence. If you look at, if you follow other history of other countries that have fought, you know, there are many decades of many years of war, but once you have uh, mastered, you have a very good template 
you follow it, it does not matter how long it takes, at the end of the day, your freedom is here. Oh. So with the, with the step we are taking now, especially soliciting support from the United States, with the uh, political uh, approach, and then the armed struggle approach in defense of our land, you know, when they come to kill, we'll kill them back in defense, in self-defense. So that will continue. And the ban on any Nigeria uh, terrorists in uniform will continue to uh, increase on a daily basis. Like I said, we are not in a hurry. It does not matter how long it takes, but we will make sure that we decimate them until even if the one person that is remaining, that one person will be hunted down until they leave our land. That's where we are. So it is called, you know, for Musa who have been describing the kind, the type of war they have waged on Biafra people to help him. He called the asymmetric war, he said guerrilla warfare and all that. And of course, uh, some people that have even described, uh, you know, other type of wars that we have waged according to them. But we are not waging war against Nigeria. We are just defending ourselves as we pursue our freedom. That's what it is. So uh, those who say you have waged war against Nigeria, a uh, war of attrition, uh, attrition and all that. If it is war of attrition, we would defend ourselves using the war of attrition. And it is nobody's like, nobody's going to say we are committing crime for defending our, ourselves in adopting the war of attrition, which is fight until the enemy is gone. That's where we are. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that. That's all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. How about All right, uh, Ralph, you can continue. You guys can continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Chike Zee's hand is up. Chike Zee, can you unmute yourself and uh, let us hear you? Chike Zee, can you unmute yourself? Yes, uh, greetings to all black fans all over the world good afternoon uh good afternoon to my pm may i say god bless you sir i have a a coded issue with uh, pm let me use this opportunity to remind pm that onion drew mazenam the canoe said that he will sacrifice anything sacrificable, including his life, his family, and whatever, to make sure that their price actualized. And that is why he's there in front of the warfare. PM, please, sacrifice anything sacrificable. Black France all over the world have trusted you more than 50 million people have voted for the referendum. What a nation have cannot be more valued than their life. Please let not the, the mistake of Juku, of Juku be repeated. Please and please, this is our cry. Over 99% of their friends are to homeland, the Afro de facto government in homeland, are in support of our freedom. Sacrifice is anything sacrificable? No nation will sacrifice anything in favor of any other nation without having mind of what they will benefit. Please, I beg you, you know what I'm saying spiritually. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that is powerful. It's not only BM, it's all of us. All of us. Uh, thank you very much. This is also another important one, and I run back here again. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> there we if I remember correctly, uh, he made mention about uh, the countries that are helping us have something to benefit. Right? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly it. We are doing everything opposite of what Ujuku and uh, his team did in the 67. So anybody that want to help us, let them come. We are going to give them free oil because that is the only thing they are after. And that was the mistake that uh, our fathers made in the 67. They thought that uh, it is all about having your things by yourself to yourself 
but you don't know that everything in life is one step at a time. You need to you need to know how to bring out your pet. Simon Epa, Bobby Afran, Prime Minister, or Bobby Afran Public Government in Ezai. I do not see Dunna Fukosia Ada, Nero Hupo. A Geniki will equal Bastama Kayabi Fender, Nino Hugasi, Nero Hupo, the teacher, a drop on a year on the comments from below. Also, the Poki be a Bobon and Cabo Bosses Guinea, so you like Nero Hupo, or in a four Yabi on your eye, Cabalo, Kelaiki, Antono, or no notification. Share where called the Gwendozo, Munai.